Hi, Leo. Welcome to your March 2018 Life Path Update. It's Raina here. This is a reading that I've done sporadically. Well, I've done them regularly, and I call them different things. I used to call it abundance reading or bliss reading, I called it last time. Now I'm just saying Life Path Update because I'm trying to give some kind of an idea of where I'm going with this. And it's not a love reading. It's not supposed to be just a career reading. It's something more philosophical, looking at your life symbolically. And this month, I'm actually going to use um, oracle cards only. I will be picking a card from my Law of Attraction deck that just gives an affirmation, just to set the mood. And then I'm going to be picking a few other cards. So one of them, I'll just start right now. This one is from the Energy Oracle deck by Sandra Ann Taylor. I'm picking one from the Keepers of Light. And I'm picking one from the Earth Magic deck. Maybe I should just put it more in the camera. Just... And I'm going to start with the Law of Attraction. <clears throat> okay, so I don't know. I, I've done one of these so far and I thought I got the same one for Aquarius, but who knows. Visualization. I make mental pictures of my goals that are simple and to the point. And I would just make that even simpler. I actually visualize things. I don't just do things. I mean, I actually think about, take it to the fullest extent. When you think to yourself, I'd like to do something, just take it through. See how it would feel to actually be doing those things and, and try to visualize and also try to research if there's something that you don't know about that that relates to something that you would like to do, whether it's a place you want to live. Do some research. Maybe spend some time there and see if you like the area. <clears throat> okay. So let's start with the Oracle card um, all tied up and I believe they read them reversed also. It's funny too because I looked at the bottom of that deck and it was upright so I figured all the cards were upright so that one was really meant to be reversed. Okay. I'm just going to read the beginning where they talk about what the card shows. This card shows a woman tied up with vines around her wrists, body, and arms. Receiving this... Okay, well, I'm not going to read what the upright says. I'll put it upright, but I'm going to read the reverse. This card reversed is telling you that the ties that bind are about to break loose. A previously stuck situation is opening up and the restrictions are clearing out. This card reverse can also indicate also indicates that you are ready to break free from the habits and patterns that have kept you f tied up for so long. Get ready to free yourself. You have all the power and clarity at this point. So untie the binds of the patterns that have stopped you from being authentic and empowered. Now is the time to liberate yourself. And the op and the affirmation is I release stuck energy, old habits and restrictions. My life is opening up. I'm free to choose my reality. For Leo, this 
this tendency to get in a rut is probably familiar to you. The reason that, one reason that Leos are considered loyal is because they tend to value the tried and true in everything in life. And there can be good time, there could be good expressions of that and there can be times when it holds you back, when it keeps you mired in complacency or just feeling like fear based about doing something different. And yeah, I mean, of course, the unknown is always a little bit scary, but there has to be kind of a dance between what the good things of Leo and fixed signs are, which is like that sense of continuity, that sense of dependability and staying the course. When other people quit, that is one of the, that endurance, that um, enduring spirit of, of a fixed sign. And then the shadow parts of that, which are the kind of blind slave to routine and the the just the the kind of stubborn refusal to see when things need to be changed when you have made a mistake maybe it's in a choice of partner maybe it's in a choice of believing them for the upteenth time okay so the next card I'm going to do is the earth magic card and I just have to find the booklet so I have this all stacked up. Oh, I see it. It's like at the bottom of something. Okay. Okay, and it's River. I keep drawing this card in many different readings. Fighting or blocking the flow of your life force can lead you to feeling spiritually void and disconnected from source. Just like the metaphor of the river, it does not work to force or fight this compelling movement. When you simply pay attention and observe the flow, it becomes easier to navigate your experiences and see what lies ahead. Or at least get a sense of what is to come by the ever-changing geography that unfolds as you cruise along. Your resistance is hampering your ability to make a choice in this matter. Surrender to the movement of life. Be grateful and you will see the signs along the shore and in the river itself that offer you clues about what direction your egoless self is to be making. Go with the flow is more than a trite aphorism here. It is essential that you do so now. Breathe, relax, and you will know. And, you know, to me, there's a lot of continuity between the two, the first two cards I've read because in a, that all tied up is also kind of suggesting resistance. What you resist persists. What you are trying to avoid dealing with um, comes back, never really goes away. So uh, the first card was talking about a habit, for instance, and sometimes um, you know, of course, there are all kinds of habits, including uh, other people, can be your bad habit. But um, let's just take substance abuse. A lot of times people don't realize it, but they're engaged in substance abuse because they're resisting something in their life that they don't want to look at that is bothering them. And they think that if they escape through getting... Um, in an altered state of consciousness, that that's going to automatically, you know, make the problem disappear. And of course it doesn't, and it actually exacerbates the problem. Um, it really does, because you not only don't deal with the original problem, but then the, the uh, cumulative effects of avoiding it. So... The river is flowing, and flowing is, there's, when you do that in your life, you're trusting. 
you know. You don't have that sense of like, oh my God, what's going to happen? I, I think that I do that pretty well. Not 100% perfectly, uh, but I think I am pretty good at allowing life to be what it is. And you will see sometimes that the people that have the greatest ambition sometimes are very unhappy people. You can have goals and you can have, you have, you can have aspirations, but being that when I talk about type A personality, I, I'm talking about the people that they're always pushing to make things happen, but they never savor their successes. And so that's where um, that sense of resistance, you're resi you know, sometimes successful people may be resisting patting themselves on the back and feeling good about a job well done, you know, workaholics. Leos, you can be workaholics, and that's, a, that's something that you definitely have to watch out for, is being able to just um, balance your life and be able to flow in moments where you're not having to achieve anything. And um, I don't want to give the impression that I think uh, having any ambition is bad. I'm talking about when it seems that it just makes a person more uptight and anxious and uh, and just chronically unhappy and I just see people that seem to be like that and it's like I don't want to be like that and so that's kind of why I develop my own way of um, approaching life you know witnessing others doing that okay now the last card is Isis manifesting now people have to understand that Isis if I'm not mistaken, is the Egyptian version of like uh, Diana and uh, what's the other? I, and I always get the Greeks and Romans mixed up. The the moon goddess. There's Diana and uh, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Okay, it's just a different culture, but it's the same thing. Just like any. Um, you know, depiction of God or goddesses or what have you. Um, okay, so it says magic manifesting. This is obviously very Egyptian. Looks like Cleopatra. Your dreams, visions, and goals are becoming realities. Stay focused. And of course, she's got the Ankh, the symbol of eternity, right? Uh, something like that. Okay. Isis is a strong, smart, and focused Egyptian winged goddess or winged goddess according to legend she was able to move from darkness to light in between the underworld heaven and earth for that reason whenever she comes to us she will help us move from the hell of our own fear into the heaven of our own love she was all also able to revive her lover osiris from the dead and this powerful allegorical story shows how she can help us revive an aspect of our life or dream that we may have killed off with fear or lack of self-belief. <clears throat> with her magical abilities, Isis will guide us to bring our dreams into reality. You are moving into a space where your dream reality is becoming your outward reality. This is an extremely powerful time, and it's vital to keep focused on the highest good for all, of all. You no longer want to relive your own history and or feel unsupported. Acknowledging where you once were and how you have changed that situation around is a powerful focus of gratitude that will align you with universal abundance. Discipline and commitment are important now. Consider that you are moving between worlds when you daydream or create visions and bring life-enhancing life ideas into reality. Magic is manifesting all around you. This is exciting. And for sure... With the North Node transiting in your sign, I really feel that there's something um, very faded for you that can be quite um, powerful and life changing. And I can't remember when the North Node goes out of Leo into Cancer. I can't remember if that's the fall 
or the late summer because I'm trying to think of if it's going to if the eclipse in August in your sign is still going to be with the north node in your sign as well so I'm not sure I think it might be later in the year that the north node maybe even November but if so um, you know you're also going to have later in the year Jupiter going into a fellow fire sign so that's going to form a trine and very nice aspect for love and creativity because it's going to be in your house actually and come to think of it it'll be in the fifth house so um, that you have that to look forward to later in the year and so um, definitely respect this time Leo is a power time for you you had your full moon um, you just had all kinds of stuff happening triggers with a solar eclipse in, in your opposite sign and you're going to have a solar another solar eclipse in your sign August 11th and that north node um, there for most of the year so I wish you all the best if you'd like a um, reading the link is below take care bye